Today I'd like to talk to you about why we worship and we praise. Many times when we think about worship and praise, especially if you're a churchgoer, you think about when we sing the fast songs and we sing the slow songs. And uh, to most people, what they understand as worship is when you sing the slow, solemn, more quiet songs. But praise, on the other hand, is supposed to be when you sing the fast songs, the joyful songs. But praise and worship are far more than just singing the fast songs or the slow songs. Worship is about much more than just the songs that we sing. It's really about an attitude of our hearts. You know, when we talk about worship, worship is an active response to the character, words, and actions of God. It's our response to Him, initiated by a revelation of His redemption for our lives. When that happens, when we worship God, our minds are renewed, are transformed, our hearts are changed, and our actions are surrendered in obedience to Him. In both the Hebrew and the Greek language, there are two categories of words for worship. The first is about body language that demonstrates uh, the respect and submission uh, we have towards God, where, is, where, where we bow down, where we kneel, or we prostrate. The second is about doing something for God that demonstrates sacrifice and obedience to offer service unto Him. The Hebrew word for worship uh, is the word shaka, which means to prostrate oneself. It appears over a hundred times in the Old Testament. It speaks of us going to the lowest point, lifting up ourselves in worship and honor and exaltation of our great God. Another Hebrew word for worship is the word abad, which is to work or to serve. It appears over 250 times in the Old Testament of the Bible. And it speaks about our service unto God. So when you serve Him, you are worshiping Him. When you give of your all to Him, you're worshiping Him. Another uh, Hebrew word for worship found in the Bible is the word darash. The word darash is the word that means to seek. So every time that we seek God and we value His direction in our lives way more than our own thoughts and our own plans, what happens is this, is that we're worshiping God. We're worshiping Him. You see, worship is the believer's response to all that they are, mind, emotion, will, and body, to what God says, to who God is, and to what He does. You see, true worship is the highest and the noblest activity of which man, by the grace of God, is capable of. I want to encourage you today to see beyond what you've always thought worship and praise is. The Bible also tells us that praise is very important. In the Hebrew language, the word praise is the word yada, which means to confess, to give praise, to give thanks, to glorify, thanksgiving, to throw down, to lay down. That's the word that describes praise. So every time that you lift God up, every time that your, your words magnify Him, you're praising Him. And the Bible tells us that God dwells in the praises of His people. So when you praise, God is there. He dwells in the praises of His people. Allow me today to share with you a few practical things that will happen 
when we worship and we praise. The first is that we will receive victory. When we worship and when we praise, we receive victory. We experience victory in our battles. You see, as I said earlier, that God inhabits the praises of His people. And when we praise and we worship Him, His presence will descend amongst us and the presence of God will fill every situation that we are facing and we will experience certain victory in our battles. When King Jehoshaphat was facing a great challenge, the Bible tells us that the armies that came against him far outnumbered Jehoshaphat's army. And the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat sought the face of the Lord for God's direction uh, in this battle. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in verse 15, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, for this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. In verse 17, the Word of God says, You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give to you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. In verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohatites and the Koharites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a loud voice. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated in verse 22. Verse 23 says, Then the Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men of Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of, from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooked the desert and looked towards the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. This is what happens when you worship and you praise. God comes and He fights your battles for you. He goes ahead of you and He prepares the way. The second thing that will happen when we worship and we praise is we will receive freedom. You know, when we praise and worship the Lord, we'll experience freedom from all of our bondages. The Bible tells us about an incident where Paul and Silas were beaten repeatedly and bound and put in prison. In the midst of their pain and their bondage, while they were suffering, the Bible tells us that midnight that night, they began to praise and to worship the Lord, and the Lord delivered them in a mighty way. They did not murmur and complain against God because of their pain and suffering. They did not wait until God delivered them before they offered praises unto Him. You see, when we worship and we praise the Lord in the midst of our bondage and pain and suffering, we will experience freedom from our bondages. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 23 to 26, it says here, And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them, referring to Paul and Silas, into the prison, commanding the jailer, to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. Verse 25 says, But at midnight, 
Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. This is what happens when you praise and when you worship God. God comes and sets you free from the bondages that you are in, from the suffering that you're going through. What's amazing about this whole story is that most people would be complaining when they go through something like what Paul and Silas did. In the midst of their pain, Paul and Silas did not complain, did not murmur, did not blame God, but instead they worshipped Him. Instead, they praised Him. They sang to Him. That takes a conviction of heart. And that takes a person who understands what happens when you worship and praise. God can step in and turn your situation around. The third thing that I would like to share with you that will happen when you worship and you praise is you will receive healing. I'm sure that many of you watching this program today are going through some sort of attack on your health. Your physical body is sick. You, you're facing a challenge in your health today. But I want you to know that there is power in worship and praise. If you're going through sickness right now, if your body is being attacked by an illness right now, I want you to know that as you begin to worship and to praise God, God can reverse your condition and He can change your situation. When we praise and we worship the Lord, we begin to experience healing and miracles in our lives. The Bible tells us about a leper who came and who worshipped Jesus and he was healed of his leprosy. There was a ruler who came to Jesus whose daughter had died, his daughter was raised from the dead. There was a Canaanite woman who came to Jesus and worshipped him because her daughter was suffering from demon possession. As she worshipped Jesus, Jesus healed and set her daughter free. When we praise and we worship the Lord in the midst of our pain and suffering, the Lord will be moved with compassion on us and he will perform a miracle in our lives. If you read in the book of Matthew chapter 8 and verses 1 to 3, the Bible tells us that when he had come, referring to Jesus, come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. My dear friends, worship precedes your breakthrough. Worship precedes your victory. Worship precedes your freedom. Worship precedes your healing. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 to 26, the Bible tells us that while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. And so Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, for your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that very hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing. He said to them, make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. 
and they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all of that land. Amazing, 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 amazing. What happens when we worship God? He can even raise the dead. Finally today, in the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21 to 28, the Bible tells us about a Gentile woman who went to Jesus. In verse 21, it says, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he said to her, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and she worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Lord, yes, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Do you notice that the first time that this woman came to Jesus, she did not worship, she just cried out to him. But the second time she came, she worshipped. When she worshipped, she caught the attention of our Lord and Saviour Jesus. That's what happens when you worship God. You catch His attention and He will step into your situation, heal you, restore you and give you an awesome future. It is my hope that you have gained a little more insight today on what worship and praise is all about. My prayer is that you will become a true worshiper of God. The Bible says, they that worship the Lord, worship Him in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Worship.